The U.S. president continues to baffle the international community by sending comments via Twitter. A day after the U.S. was humiliatingly rebuffed at the U.N. General Assembly by world countries over its recognition of Jerusalem al-Quds as Israel's capital, Trump tweeted, quote, At some point, and for the good of the country, I predict we will start working with the Democrats in a bipartisan fashion. Infrastructure would be a perfect place to start. After having foolishly spent $7 trillion in the Middle East, it is time to start rebuilding our country." Unquote. Fact, blatantly saying he expects votes for money. He, he's like he's selling his vote to other countries uh, that they should vote with him because we give them other the money. This is a blatant example of blackmail. This is not foreign policy. Trump had warned before the U.N. vote that the U.S. would punish recipients of foreign aid voting against the al move. It's unclear if his tweet on the need to reconstruct the U.S. infrastructure means he is going to withdraw aid for other countries and leave, most notably, the Middle East. Of the top 10 beneficiaries of U.S. aid this year, only the Israeli regime voted no at the U.N which comes as no surprise as Israel is happy with Trump's move on al Quds. Many believe the more the U.S. distances itself from the countries it is threatening, the more isolated America will become. And this will instead benefit Russia, which quickly refills the gap left by the United States in various parts of the world. I don't think it has anything to do with withdrawing from the Middle East. I think he, and in fact, he has increased, asked for a 10% increase in our defense budget immediately after he took office. Um, and, and in fact, Congress uh, gave him more than he asked for. So our, our defense budget is going to go up to $700 billion a year. And where is that money going to be spent? Middle East. And uh, I see no indications that he's planning on withdrawing from the Middle East. I think he's full of bravado and um, foolishness. Uh, I don't think you can believe much of anything that Donald Trump says. He believes that he can conduct foreign policy 140 characters at a time through a tweet, which is just, um, it, it's absurd. It really is. Even inside the U.S. and within its political spectrum, as well as at the White House itself, many are opposed to Trump's recognition of al Quds as Israel's capital. Opponents at the White House are said to be avoiding making their views known for fear of retribution by the revengeful president of the United States. A CNN poll shows that fewer than half of Americans support the al Quds decision. According to the survey, only 36% of respondents favor moving the U.S. Embassy to the Holy City, and support for Trump recognizing Israel's capital is split along party lines. And this has fostered the notion that the U.S. is to leave its role as the peace mediator due to its move and opposition to the move. President Abbas has already stated that by this um, really poorly thought out decision to announce that the, the American embassy uh, will be moved to Tel Aviv and that Jerusalem will be um, recognized as the, as the capital of Israel. Um, it, it, President Abbas rightfully said the United States can no longer be trusted as an honest broker in between the two countries. And it's, it's obvious that for some time, for, for decades now, the United States has not been an honest broker, that they have continually sided with Israel. Israel, which is overjoyed with Trump over his unbridled support for Tel Aviv, has intensified its crackdown on Palestinians over the past days. Israeli forces have killed a number of Palestinians in Gaza and injured hundreds more during angry protests against the U.S. and Israel in the Palestinian territories. The U.S. recognition of al Quds is seen by many as an irreversible move given the damage it caused to the so-called two-state solution to the Palestinian issue. Nearly all Palestinians mistrust America and firmly believe Washington is not, was not, and will not be impartial when it comes to the Middle East. Trump's move on al Quds persuaded the Palestinians and the Muslim world that the U.S. can no longer be called a peace broker.